Welcome to the sewing report. I'm Jen. We are going to be making something to accessorize handbags, purses. You can also use it as a headscarf or a hair tie. These purse scarves. Some high-end luxury brands sell these and they charge upwards of $200 for these. Typically they are made of silk, but I'm going to be using rayon just because it's a little bit easier for me to work with. Plus it has a lot of the same properties of silk. It's very drapey, it's nice. You can hand wash these. So this one has the angled pointy ends. Brands like Hermes sells these. Again, super expensive. This is gonna be a fraction of the cost. This is the type that Louis Vuitton sells. They call them bandeaus and they have blunt cut off ends. Hermes calls their version the Twilly. Apparently that is trademarked. And I do plan to make and sell these for the Sewing Report Etsy shop. Also with this print, this is an out of print Cloud9 fabric here. This is from the collection Floral Deco. These are, I think, little tulips. The way I cut the fabric is so that the pattern would be running lengthwise. Now, rayon can be a little bit tricky to work with, I'm not gonna lie, but I have some tips to make it a little bit easier for you. This piece is about five inches by about 37 inches. I'm gonna do about a quarter inch seam allowance and your finished scarf will be about 36 inches by two inches. You can really do the, the angled tips either way. I decided to do them so that they were kind of pointing out from each other. This is literally a copy of the Hermes scarf that costs like 200, over 200 bucks. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just fold it in half the long way and I'm going to find the center point. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use the center point. I'm gonna use it for a couple a couple different things. One, it's going to be kind of a reference point because we're going to be, gl yes, glue basting, my favorite technique. We're going to be glue basting. See this rayon fabric, it's nice. Now I did not pre-wash my rayon fabric. I figured this is probably not gonna be a heavily laundered item. You could hand wash it. I did spritz it with some water and I pressed out my pieces. So I'm hoping that kind of maybe helped with the sizing a little bit. So I'm going to use the center point and see how much this rayon kind of moves. When I'm handling it, I'm handling it pretty gently. All you have to do is fold it over on itself, right sides together. You're basically just gonna be sewing down this short side, down the long side, leave about a, probably about a two to three inch opening for turning. And I'm actually gonna put my opening right at the center because when you're tying your bag to stuff, typically the center won't be very visible. So that's why I chose to put that little machine stitch part in the middle. I'm also going to use the center point to figure out where I need to fold this. So using this to kind of go all the way down. And I'm gonna be using my, my Elmer's Washable School Glue. This is my favorite glue basting uh, glue. And one of the things I like about using rayon is that rayon is, I think it's kind of like a synthetic, but not really. It kind of behaves a little more like a cotton. So I can glue base this and the glue will stick. Just as a reference point, I'm gonna mark probably about a one and a half inch on either side of the center point. And this is gonna be where I don't sew because this is going to be my opening for turning. I'm gonna start, see I marked this point here and I'm just gonna do a really small amount within the seam allowance. So I'm just gonna do that. See, I'm using the center point to know where the fabric needs to be on the other side. And I'm just going to start hitting this with a dry iron. And I'm going to do this the whole way down. And we're gonna sew two at once. We are going to sew the blunt end version and the, the angled end, and I'm going to show you both at the same time. So I usually like to start in the, in the center and then just work my way out. I'm not putting that much glue on here, just a tiny bit, and make sure you're within your seam allowance here. You do have to be kind of delicate. Don't like pull the rayon too much. And the reason I like doing the glue basting is because the rayon is so slippery that I find it does help not to have to use pins or clips or anything because the glue does the best job, in my opinion, of keeping rayon in place. I'm not sure if this would work with silk, it might. This would not work with polyester fabrics, the glue will not stay. I've used this with rayon quite a bit, this method of glue basting, and it works pretty well, like pretty much all the time. So you see, I'm kind of just lining up my ends here hitting it with a dry iron. Oh, and the link to this iron is in the description box as well. I'll show you how to do the blunt ends and the pointy ends. Now the edges of mine aren't totally even, so I'm gonna need to clip those. But you see how quick this is? 
with the glue basting. So yeah, if you want to use a rayon, I think this is a really good choice. It's not super expensive fabric, but it kind of has some of the same properties as silk. It's drapey. You really don't want to use a quilting cotton for this project because that'll get way too wrinkly. I feel like it's a little more durable than silk. So I'm just going to go down and keep hitting this with a dry iron. Again, put it plying the glue. And I do have a few of these glue bottles in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. I only have like four or five left. If you do want something like this, I would get it soon because these are one of my top sellers and I do not have any more after this. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get more. This is a very limited item. All right, this is a red one. This one's actually showing up a little bit better. So I do have both of these marking pens in the Etsy shop. They are um, air and water soluble. So both of these pens, this one's purple and then this one is uh, like a red pink. This one actually has like a little eraser on it. Here, I'll show you. So if I draw something with this pen, it will go away in a few days or if I put water on it, but this will actually er erase that mark right away. Lots of different marking pens here. These are available in the shop as well. Got this one done. We're going to set this aside and we're going to do another one. So I'm going to make one scarf with a blunt end and then one scarf with an angled end. And you see how quickly this just starts to shape up. Got this guy here. All right, so I, I already, I just pressed out the center point. So I know where the center point is here. So I'm gonna fold this in and then I'm going to mark a spot for turning. You will be able to see the stitching on the outside here, but it's such a small, honestly, I felt like I could have, I could hand sew these for sure, or you could too, but I felt like the amount of time I save from not having to hand sew, I think is, in my opinion, is worth it for you being able to see like a tiny bit of stitching on the outside. All right, so let's get the glue here. All right, so again, it's just a tiny bit of glue, not very much at all. I'm just going to and again, I'm using these center points to kind of line up with each other here. And again, the rayon is a little bit, like any fabric that's really drapey is gonna be a little bit challenging to work with, quite honestly, but you can do it. So you see how like this base together, again, I don't have to worry about pins. I don't have to worry about clips. This is just a much easier thing to do. So I'm just basically lifting this up, applying a tiny bit of glue. I'm just gonna go down and continue gluing the long edges together, right sides together. Every once in a while, the glue will just sort of get in there and you just have to like clear it out. So it's really not that big of a deal. And this iron is dry, so no steam or anything. I'm just going over it. And the reason I'm doing this is to just speed up the drying. I have an entire bolt of this fabric and I've been trying to figure out what to do with it. But then I was inspired to make these purse scarves and I was like, this would be really cute. And I looked at the pattern, just the direction of, that the pattern runs is really not, you know, it's, it's perfect for a purse scarf. A little bit more glue here. Usually you use my fingers to kind of keep it in place first and then hitting it with the iron. Where I made these marks, this is where I'm going to be leaving opening, leaving an opening for turning. So I will not be sewing this little section here. Now I've got this little long, wrong side out little tube thing and I left this little opening. Okay, so now I have to cut the ends. Okay, so I'm gonna use my square ruler here. This will be the one with the blunt ends and this is actually pretty easy to do. I'm just gonna trim off both ends. This is gonna be my blunt edge version. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. All right, I'm just gonna trim a tiny bit here. To make things easy, I'm gonna start in the center on each side. Start here, so a quarter inch seam here and then over here, back stitching. And then I'll go over here and I'll sew the same thing. So down the long side and then on the edge. This is going to be the one that's the angled end. This is the folded end, and then this is going to be the one where there will, there will be a seam. I'd like to have my angled part go this way just so that I can have the folded section be the one that runs the longest. This is a creative grids ruler. You can use any ruler that has a 45 degree angle line on it. Use this as your edge here. So you see what I'm doing? So use 45 degree angle, and I'm just going to chop this off. So you see what I did? So now this has an angled end, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna flip this over. See how the rayon just shifts around a lot and stuff? You have to kind of manipulate it into place. So I'm using this 45 degree angle as like my straight edge, and then your straight edge becomes the 45 degree angle. So I'm just gonna take my rotary cutter, 
and just trim that off. And that's really like literally all you have to do. See, there's like a little opening here. I'm just going to glue base this shot a little bit. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here. Dry iron. You could make a few of these in like an hour. You could use this for Easter baskets. Okay, so now I've got the ends glue basted. So I'm just gonna be sewing center out and then down the sides and then doing it on the other side. For this one, it'll be the same. You're just sewing at an angle. So that's the only real difference. Whatever version you're making, they're, they're gonna take about the same amount of time. I've got about a 2.75 stitch length here. I tried to pick a thread that really coordinated with the fabric, especially since there are gonna be like a little bit of visual, visible stitches. All right, so we'll sew the blunt end one first. Here are my marks. So I'm not going to be sewing this section here. I'm gonna be doing a quarter inch seam allowance because I wanted the opening for turning to be pretty small on this, uh, especially since this fabric is so lightweight, it shouldn't be too bulky. Sometimes it takes a little bit of gumption for the sewing machine to go forward and back. I'm not using a walking foot or anything. I didn't really have too much trouble with this, but you see how much easier it is when you are not worrying about pins or anything or moving. And I really didn't have too much trouble with the fabric shifting with the glue basting. So it seemed to work out pretty well. So, you just get, so yeah, this is gonna be a really, really quick project. So quarter inch seam allowance. Just using the line as a guide. And then when I get to the corner, I'm gonna slow down a little bit and try to get as close to the quarter inch mark as I can. So I think it'll be about here. Okay, so I'm leaving my needle down and I'm pivoting. And see, this is exactly a quarter inch, so this is good. Let's go here, all right. And then when you get to the very end, this is a fold, so you don't really have to worry about that much. Uh, but I am gonna do a couple back stitches just so the stitches don't pop out. Okay, now I just have to do the other side. So I've got one side done, and I'm gonna trim my threads too, just so they don't get in the way. But yeah, no pins, way easier to do this. Here's my mark. So I'm gonna start about here, leaving about a three inch opening for turning. About, about, actually about two and a half here. You really don't need that big of an opening because this is not that bad to turn. I'm gonna do some back stitching. Let's go forward. Yeah, and if you really, like you can really start to speed through these. So once you get comfortable making these, you could probably make a ton of these in a day. This could be a pretty quick uh, thing to make and sell if you wanna do that. Not anything revolutionary. You're welcome to go ahead and make these and sell these based on this tutorial, go ahead. This is a, just a very basic concept, so don't worry about that. So we're gonna get to the end here. And this should be, ah, all right, I need about one more stitch. One more stitch to be at a quarter inch. Okay, there we go. So leave needle down. All right, pivot. And then sew the rest of the way at a 90 degree angle. And I do like this skinny foot because it's just so easy to maneuver. I don't know, I just, I just like it. All right. And I'm using a glide 40 weight thread. You could definitely use a lighter weight thread. This thread's been working pretty good for me, so thought I would keep doing it. This is a tribalobal polyester, and this is, I don't have this color available in the Etsy shop, but I do have this brand and type of thread with like a little starter pack. Good, perfect corner. And I'm, I'm gonna end up snipping these to reduce the bulk in the seam allowance. Uh, but here is one scarf sewn, and we're gonna do the other one. Same thing, except we're going to be doing it at an angle at the end. All right, some back stitching here. All right, and then yeah, you can really, I'm using my fingers as a guide here, and it's helping me to go a little bit faster. This is something you could do to speed things up. 
and I'm sewing on a Juki DDL8700. This is an industrial sewing machine. I have a couple videos on it on my main channel, The Sewing Report. If you are interested in learning more about it, I do have some videos about using it. Okay, so needle down. And the only difference is instead of it being a nine degree, a degree angle you're turning, you're gonna be turning 45 degrees. That's literally it. Okay, so I'm gonna sew the rest of the way down. And that's, yeah, look how easy this is. So I'm not at the end. I'm going to get one stitch and I'm gonna try to do it like this. I've heard that's better for pointy tips. So we're gonna try it. We're gonna try that. So I don't know if this will work. I heard that, so instead of just sewing the whole way across, I stopped and then sewed across here. I'm gonna see if that helps with the way the point looks. I've heard that is a sewing tip before and I wasn't sure if it would work. So we're gonna try that out. Let's do this side and I'm gonna start about here. Couple stitches forward, couple stitches back. I usually back stitch about three or four stitches. All right, and then quarter inch seam allowance and 2.75 stitch length. So not quite three. You don't have to think too hard about this type of project. This is kind of a night. Nice, this is definitely what I needed this week. Let's just put it that way. Okay, and then needle down. I'm turning a 45 degree angle and I'm going to keep sewing. Yeah, we're gonna try this sewing tip, I heard, because sometimes it can be hard to get good points. All right, so I'm gonna stop a few. All right, we're gonna do this, and then we're going to, all right, sew across. We're gonna see if this works. I don't know. We'll see at the end. We'll see at the end if this works. Okay. And that's it. We actually have most of the sewing done. So these are some new scissors I've been loving. These are Kai serrated scissors, and they're supposed to be good for slippery fabrics like this. And I have found that to be true. At the corners here, if you don't trim these, you're gonna get very bulky corners. So I'm just gonna trim at an angle here. So sort of do like a 45 degree angle. I'm also gonna trim this corner here. Here we go, I'm gonna trim this a bit, okay. And then I'm going to trim this other side too. So I'm just trying to get the bulk out of these areas because when you turn this right side out and just stuff out, poke out the corners, uh, if you don't do this, you're gonna get some very wonky looking corners. We're just gonna do this, okay. For the angled one, I'm gonna trim here. So I'm, just, so I'm gonna trim both corners here. Trim this guy here. And when I'm poking these corners out, I have to be very careful not to poke through them. I've done that before. Okay, don't cut into your stitches. That would be very unfortunate. I use this free chopstick I got from Publix to turn things. Because you're gonna be, tur you know, closing up the opening later, it helps me personally if I fold this out first by pre-pressing this area here. So I find this helps. So it kind of has like fold memory here or pressing memory. I'm going to start pulling this out through that tiny opening. And because this is rayon, this should go pretty easily because this is very lightweight fabric. I'm gonna use my chopstick to poke out the corners, uh, but very, very, very gently. You do not wanna accidentally pop out your stitches. Real gentle. Because I trimmed this corner down. If you poke too hard, you're just gonna pop the stitches and then there's gonna be a hole in your project. All right, we'll do the other side. One thing about making these scarves is that you do have to press them well. I'll share with you a couple pressing tips. I'm putting the seam more in the center and I'm going to press these out with my fingers and then just gently hit it with the iron just to get the seam kind of separated here. So you see, this makes it easier to get this pressed here. I want this seam to be nice and flat. So you see, I'm using my fingers to sort of roll the seams out, get them to where I want. Here is my opening. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and then we'll work on glue basting the opening shut and then we just have to stitch that up and that's, that's literally it, guys.
hit it with a little steam here. Press near the opening. My opening's pretty small here. I'm just gonna use some glue here and close this up and then all you have to do is edge stitch over this. This is a mistake I made. You do want to mark where the opening actually is because sometimes you're like, all right, where did it go? And because this fabric is dark, I'm gonna try to use my white pen here. Uh, but this will give me a better idea of where I need to sew as well. I need to stitch the opening closed from here to here. All right, let's get the other one. stitch a little bit. I usually do about three stitches. Let's see, one, two. Wow, I'm going super slow. Okay, I'm gonna put my needle down. It always helps to stop with my needle down. And because I glue basted, everything's like staying in place and I'm using a coordinating thread so at least the thread blends in. Let's back stitch a little bit more. All right, forward stitch. And I'm just sort of making sure that the thread doesn't go anywhere. We're gonna stitch this closed. I'm getting, I'm trying to get pretty close to the edge here. Back stitch. And you can see because the thread matches, it really blends in quite well. This scarf, which has blunt ends, so this is more of the Louis Vuitton style here. This is about two inches wide by about 36 inches long. You could use it as a headband, you could use it as a hair tie as well. And then this one is more the Hermes style, the angled pointy ends. This is about the same size though, just a different type of end. So you could do either one. I've been loving this uh, website called Dress Up Your Purse. They sell a lot of accessories and stuff that you can jazz up your handbag. And I got this really cute pochette from Dress Up Your Purse and it has a detachable chain. So you can get these pretty much anywhere, but one thing you can do is I got to attach this chain to the zippers on my purse. This clasp isn't big enough to hook onto these rings because these rings are really thick. Right off the bat, you can take the chain from Dress Up Your Purse, just add it to the front of your bag. So that looks super cute already. To tie a bow on your bag. You could either do it through the O-ring or you could just do, you know, do it around the handle itself. And this would work on a lot of handbags where you've got any sort of handle. You could do this on a tote bag, whatever. I'm gonna have this right side be a little bit shorter and then I'm gonna tie a bow on this. So this is what you saw in the thumbnail here. Isn't this cute? Okay, so yeah, check this out. Notice how much different this purse looks with just a little bit of added detail. Isn't this adorable? So look, I went from being like kind of plain Jane with the front to having a really cute bow on the front and then this little chain here. And you can make these in any fabric you want, pretty much do whatever. I'm going to wrap the handle of the bag. This is something that's very popular with top handle bags. So I'm just gonna find the center point of the angled scarf. I'm just gonna start wrapping this around the handle. And again, it doesn't have to be like super exact or anything. Let's just start wrapping this around the handle. And then the last go around, kind of tie a knot like this. And I kind of, I kind of was trying to figure out how to make this look the best. All right, and then do the same, same thing on the other side. And the reason I started off in the center uh, was so that they would be even on each end and that seemed to work out okay. All right, this will look better. Doesn't this look cute? So it just adds a little bit, a little bit of flair to your handbag. You could also take the one with the blunt ends and you could also add a bow additionally on here. I'm using two scarves, but it sort of looks like it's just one. So then I could just tie a little bow here. You've got a wrapped handle and you have a bow on it. Uh, so what do you think? Have you ever used a purse scarf? Have you ever 
thought about accessorizing your bag like this. So there's a lot you can do with this, but doesn't this look a lot less boring? So you could take one scarf, fold it in half, loop it around like this, and then just sort of knot it like this. Yeah, this is going over here, but you could just have it hang off the bag like this. Uh, if you want to do something for Easter, you could get a really cute basket and then tie a bow on this on the handle of the basket. So that would be like a little gift along with the basket. So if you're doing Easter baskets for your like kids or grandkids, yay! Thank you all for joining me and I'm gonna sign off pretty soon, but it's been a lot of fun. If you haven't already, hit the like button on your way out. I will see you again in the next one. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report and remember, Whatever you're doing, make it fun.